Welcome to another episode of Wrecked Live. Today we have a breaking news story. We go to current bag holders and the situation of the markets. It doesn't get any fresher than this, people. Roll the clip. <laughs> Not even Indiana Jones himself can outrun these markets. <laughs> Back to you, K-Dub. What's going on, guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. If we dive in and we have a look at the charts today, there's not really too much going on on coin market cap. I mean, we pulled back a little bit from yesterday. Bitcoin dominance, 49.2%. Will we see a 50% Bitcoin? Probably, guys. Most likely. If we see the biggest changes of the day, we have Kin, Dentacoin, Digibyte, Metaverse, Waves, Dogecoin, Huobi Token, Dash, Stellar, and Augur all doing relatively well today. So it's not really a bad day. There's a mix of red and green. Kind of a normal day, although overall the market is kind of seeing a bit of a pullback. I mean, if we do look at the past seven days, you know, a week ago we were sitting at 266 and now we're down to 226. So this is the lowest point of 2018 so far. What are you guys going to do? What are you guys going to do? Moving on. So check out what happened yesterday. So Coinbase Pro, they had to actually halt their trading. Really pissed off a lot of people. There was an issue with the BTC USD order book because the pairs were unavailable for trading. So they had to halt it. It was down for some hours. They had a lot of angry people. I mean, look at all these angry tweets and complaints. You have OMFG, how strange you clear the whole damn book and then complain about not enough liquidity. How do you expect people putting money up now? This is insane. You need to be covering your customers for this. I can't even imagine how many people were mid-trade. Now another 8.5 hours delay. Insane. Totally unprofessional. So guys, as you can see right here, you know, there's, yeah, a lot of people were pissed off. I mean, I'd be pissed off if it was mid-trade as well. You know, I'm like half executed and then say the price, say the, pri the price drops right? And you miss out on a good trade or something like that. So well, what are you going to do? So here's something interesting. So you have Vitalik Buterin proposes a consensus algorithm that requires only 1% to be honest. This is pretty revolutionary, guys. He says, if you add even more assumptions, specifically you require observers to also be actively watching the consensus and not just downloading its output after the fact, you can increase fault tolerance all the way to 99%. So Vitalik suggests that instead of requiring 50% of miners or stakers to be honest, there can be a method which requires only 1% of them to be honest. The dreaded 51% attacks thus would under this consensus algorithm become a 99% attack, which means it would be effectively impossible. So Vitalik is proposing that if an independent observer of the network i.e. just the blockchain client a user is running, not a miner or validator, watches what's happening in real time and pays attention to when messages appear, they could detect foul play by miners performing a 51% attack, and this can provide additional safety guarantees that can protect, protect against such attack. So the focus here is, of course, on Casper, and this proposal appears to be a suggestion of its potential incorporation in proof of stake. So... If this is possible, this does revolutionize the game. This changes the whole game. I mean, 51% attacks on the Bitcoin network, pretty difficult. It's possible. But on these smaller coins, these smaller networks, absolutely. But upping the ante to a 99% attack in order to overthrow the network... That's a, that's a game changer, guys. So just had to kind of bring that to you nice and early. We also have the Bitcoin Core developer reveals a, a critical bug in Bitcoin Cash. So um, basically, Corey Fields, he said that in April, earlier this year, he anonymously reported the consensus bug known as SIGHASH underscore bug, which I just want to note, he was under no obligation to do this. He didn't have to do this. So he went out of his way to report this bug. I just wanted to say that before we go on. So a so-called chain splitting bug, the vulnerability would have allowed a specifically crafted transaction to split the Bitcoin Cash blockchain into two incompatible chains without quick action from developers and a campaign to align all participants on one side of the fork or the other the two camps of participants will never again be able to agree. He continues summing up 
the impact of the bug going unresolved. At the point, the currency has effectively been split into two incompatible currencies. Transacting as before will no longer be possible. And you even had Jimmy Song tweeting out about this. He said, wow, Bitcoin Cash has a consensus vulnerability. Core dev Corey Fields anonymously lets them know they fix and continue without the issue. Uh, yeah. So that was a that was a big issue that was going on as well. A lot of people were speaking about that. So another thing that's been everyone's been kind of talking about is the unhackable BitFi wallet, right? So apparently it has been hacked, okay, by uh, this 15 year old uh, Spudo Wire. He posted a video. So this is from Abe Snowman. So it shows him playing Doom on the wallet. So if you zoom in right here, you can actually see. So he's playing Doom. Okay, but it also says up here that no one has actually successfully claimed the bounty reward and removed the cryptocurrency from the wallet. So I guess in a sense, it's not technically unhackable, but no one has actually gotten the funds yet. So technically, you know, it's still a pretty secure wallet, but that being said. So you also have this tweet coming out from this guy who apparently is, let me see, I had to translate everything. He's the candidate for the presidency by Novo, the party created for ordinary citizens for a safer, simpler, and free Brazil. So clearly translated it once again. He says, it's difficult to know what the future of Bitcoin and other crypto coins will be, but for the most interesting is the technology behind it, blockchain. We've heard this over and over again. This protocol has the capacity to generate greater security, transparency, and decentralization, both in the private sector and in the public sector. So that's really awesome coming out of Brazil, guys. Also, here's something interesting. So we did see what happened with Block Nation, and they had their, you know, payable wristbands. Well, now you're seeing that Dash actually has their own NFC wristband payment system and they used it at the Estonia Music Festival. So you can kind of go through here and see this. Obviously, I'll drop links in the description, but you can see right there, you know, people are paying with their wristbands. And yeah, so it looks like this technology could become a lot more popular and these NFC wristbands might end up being one of the main ways uh, used in these types of festivals. Now, I know there's a lot of companies using them right now just for traditional fiat, but it's really easy to also implement the crypto into it as well. And I think we could definitely see a lot more of these moving forward. I mean, if you guys didn't see my video, I did it myself using the Block Nation you know, wristband. So that's really cool. And see, see, like these are things that like people can use. These are things that I care about on my channel. I mean, yeah, it's great to like read white papers all day, but realistically we have to get it accessible. It has to be usable. Most people do not care. If you buy a MacBook from a store and you bring it home and it doesn't work, do you care about the guy explaining to you? Well, you know, we have, we have this chip inside and all this other stuff. No, you just, you want it to freaking work, right? When you drive a car, if you buy a brand new car and it doesn't work, right? What are you going to do? Go there and have the guy explain all the inner workings and the tech of the car to you? No, people do not care about the inner workings. I mean, we care about the tech, but most people don't. So I, I'm going on a bit of a rant here, but I'm happy to see these things getting used in the real world, simply not complex. You know, your mom, your grandmother, your sister, anyone can use this stuff. That's what I care about. I care about adoption and real world use cases. So we've been sitting here now long enough on this Tron post. So it says Tron has formed a strategic partnership with Mushroom, a leading Mushroom. It sounds like a, like a hard core bit like yeah we're going to the mosh room yeah rock on right anyway so it says they're a leading portable smart toilet supplier in china the two partners will work on blockchain technologies especially cross-border settlement with cryptocurrencies so enter the shitcoin jokes right there you guys go but when you really think about it the average person goes to the bathroom 1.5 times a day. You can check that out. That's a statistic. I looked it up. So you figure there's 7.4 billion people in the world. Obviously, they don't have access to smart toilets. But when you think about it, there is some business to be had. Oh, pun intended. So I'm not going to just, I'm not going to, you guys can 
to talk about that partnership. So, so you have this guy, right? Darius uh, Langvenus. He calls himself an innovative lawyer, or maybe he is an innovative lawyer. Maybe that's a term I'm unaware of. So he talks about the future of smart contracts. Now, we've heard about smart contracts being able to kind of get rid of these third parties, right? You don't have to go through a broker. You don't have to go through a lawyer. You don't have to like go through a real estate agent when we have smart contracts in the future. I mean, that's a lot of fantasy. I'm not too sure. We still need oracles. We still need data. But cutting to the chase here, he basically says um, that he thinks that in the future, lawyers are going to have to kind of adopt to learn smart contracts, etc. So here's something that I wanted to point out. So he was speaking to this guy, Lucas Karras at CryptoDust, okay? Apparently, he's an extremely smart person in the field of blockchain and smart contracts. And he said, smart contracts main features are self-execution and no need of trusted third party. However, the key issue is that a casual person cannot read the code and understand what the contract states. Guilty. I can't read code. So either it is an ICO investment, contract loan, or gambling, etc. That's where I see lawyers could come into play. So understanding the law and smart contract code could lead to a greater insight for the customer. Of course, it will be hard to start by learning the basics of code, example, JavaScript, and then you could switch to something more complex though, like Solidity. It would help the lawyer to gain competitive advantage and provide extra insights for their clients. So could this become one of the competitive edges for for lawyers in the future? It's possible. They say it's obvious that the legal market will experience a huge change and new technologies are a key factor of it. The new promising lawyers will be reading and analyzing smart contracts in order one day to code such contracts themselves. So, okay, yeah, if smart contracts really do go as mainstream as we all hope they do, eventually, yes, jobs will have to adapt, people will have to potentially learn code, and the space for, you know, lawyers is going to get more competitive. So, yeah, Interesting, though. Very, very interesting to consider that. You also have uh, Terra Virtua and Wax partnering to bring VR games items onto the blockchain. So Terra Virtua is a blockchain-based platform for VR games. It's partnering with the Worldwide Asset Asset Exchange, or Wax, if you guys have seen that recently, to bring tradable in-game items to more widely accessible cross-site storefront. The partnership aims to use blockchain to enable users to trade items on their own terms. Wax is attempting to change that by introducing a crypto token that works with and hopefully will be widely adopted by games that rely heavily on item trading. As more game developers adopt Wax, the tokens and items can be traded across different sites. Well, I'm not going to say, but kind of Engine Coin has already done that with the ERC 1155s and we already do have ERC 721s. However, I think the key that we really want to pay attention to here is the fact that they are really looking to market this for virtual reality. It says the market for in-game items and skins is a rough estimate of $50 billion and virtual reality is just a fraction of it. So if they do just tackle this small little niche market, they may actually have an opportunity as well. Oh, I got to talk about this, guys. So this is something really serious. So there is a fake Omise Go uh, blog. Let me see if I can actually move this up right here. Um, look, in the, look in the top left-hand corner. You're going to really have to squint for this one. Can you guys see the address right here? Right here, uh, underneath the O. It's an O, but it's a dot. Right, so it's Omise Go with a O and a dot dot com slash blog, which is not their official blog. But anyway, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that this is a complete scam. Somebody uh, on Reddit already got scammed over this. I'm sure multiple people have. So it looks like your everyday average post, and then it says OMG and ETH holders who wish to participate in this campaign, which is going to be an airdrop. It says click here. You click here, and even the official Omise Go website. You know, you can go down to the bottom, and it's Omise Go with the dot under the O again. So it's really, really, really scary, guys. You have to check the bars, read where you're going to, check if the sites are secure, uh, bookmark sites, definitely, like bookmark them so you don't even have to type them in because you can't trust ads, you can't trust searches, you can't trust phishing links because it's just crazy. So guys, be careful. There's no Misego scam that's going around right now. I'm going to drop a link to this in the description, okay? But do not listen. Just I'm leaving it there for reference purposes so you can see the scam website, but don't click it. It's a scam. Okay, moving on. We have news coming out of Elastos. So we've kind of already briefly spoken about this, but the Elastos TV box to bring 1 million carrier nodes by the end of the year. If you saw my video earlier, I had that demonstration. 
um, showing the guy watching TV and all that. So anyway, the Elastos TV box utilizes the Elastos carrier peer-to-peer -peer network. So uh, I think it's Shiju TV will promote and market Elastos carrier as a new service that will accompany its large-scale production of TV boxes that are already in existence. Along with featuring a video player like most TV boxes, now with the help of Elastos carrier, the box will build P2P connections between TV boxes and mobile phones that will allow customers direct connection between devices and customer support. These features are the first to exist in applications in the in the OTT industry. So using the Elastos carrier to directly connect with other devices without utilizing central servers not only saves operation costs from the manufacturer, but more importantly protects users' privacy. Then I wanted to kind of talk about the major milestone that was achieved. So at the Elastos uh, event, you had a community member in South Africa that used his mobile phone to remotely connect to the TV box at the Elastos booth. This remote testing of the box marked a historical first step signifying the successful integration of Elastos carrier with a device that can be put into mass production. The TV box already being sold without the carrier function now with the Elastos carrier added has projected sales for the next five months of one 180k all the way up to 250k units respectively, enabling a potential to finish the year with over 1 million Elastos carrier nodes sold. Huge, huge, huge news, guys. Um, obviously, you guys know we have Elastos coming up on the token tank as well. Definitely going to be picking Rong Chang's brain on all of this stuff. <laughs> Rong Chen's brain on all of this stuff moving forward as well. Also, Blockchain Brad had an interview with him recently too, if you guys just can't wait for that. So yeah, that definitely is some awesome things to look forward to. Just moving on to some quick news real quick. So <clears throat> before we go, you have the Singapore venture capital firm Golden Gate that's going to launch a $10 million fund for investments in blockchain and cryptocurrency companies. So they are one of the leading venture firms in Southeast Asia and they're going to invest in early stage companies including cryptocurrency exchanges, security providers, and blockchain tech startups through the Lunex Ventures Fund. And also, we have Thai police arrest a suspect in a $24 million Bitcoin scam. Guys, it's just another scam. I mean, <laughs> it's just another scam, seriously. But before I go, I want to remind you that no matter how bad the times are, no matter how bad the charts look, no matter how you might feel right now, I know that these aren't exactly the greatest times in cryptocurrency. Just remember that you don't want to be like Tom Randolph, who said, well, Bitcoin has stabilized at almost exactly $14 a coin. I'm tired of waiting for a jump. So I'm taking the loss and getting back my cash. And this was posted on July 15th of 2011. So guys, don't be like Tom. That being said, guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming back to my channel. You guys are awesome. It is a beautiful freaking day in New York. I hope it's a great day where you guys are. Looking very, very, very forward to the weekend. For everybody out there, you know, it's all right. Whatever's going on with crypto, it's the weekend. Honestly, guys, if there was ever a time to buy the dip, it's now. Not financial advice. Do what you want. But there are some incredible prices. Um, just looking over these prices today, it's just insane. I mean, look at these prices, guys. Tron is two cents. Monero's ninety-seven bucks. Dash is one hundred and eighty-five dollars. Neo is twenty-one dollars, guys. Binance is actually doing pretty well. Um, yeah, Icon seventy-eight cents. Zilliqa four cents. Yeah, well, guys, I mean, it's definitely a day for shopping, but I'm not gonna tell you what to do. That being said, guys. Not financial advice. My name's K-Dub. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting. You guys are amazing. If you guys haven't joined my Telegram group yet, link in the description. It's the Crypto Zombies Telegram chat. Really awesome group of people. Great times, good discussions. I love to hear your feedback. That being said, my name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Enjoy your freaking weekend. And until next time, stay crypto and peace out.